Why did CM Punk make his shocking return to WWE at Survivor Series? Why did WWE bring Punk back when they could risk poisoning their own locker room? And what does this mean for the promotion that fired him? All Elite Wrestling. Breaking news! Look in my eyes! What do you see? Punk's gonna cause controversy. Na -na 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 -na. Support Wrestle Talk. Right at the very end of Survivor Series 2023, after the culmination of the five-on-five -five men's war games match, even after the WWE copyright logo appeared in the bottom corner. I will trust you for as long as I let copyright logo! CM Punk made his shocking return to WWE for the first time in almost a decade in his hometown of Chicago, where he immediately angered loads of people. Drew McIntyre reportedly stormed out the building. Seth Rollins exploded in a fit of kayfabe fury, likely masking actual shoot fury. And this guy, Ollie Davis, who's been making CM Punk WWE return confirmed jokes for six years felt a bit let down. Punk had returned to wrestling, yay! But what did it cost? Ah, only everything he once claimed to stand for. Just two days after Punk's return on the 25th of November 2023, the 27th marks nine years since the release of arguably the most explosive wrestling shoot interview of all time. CM Punk appearing on Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast. Because to fully understand the reasons why Punk returned to WWE, we first have to understand why he quit slash was fired in the first place, which Punk detailed in great, almost libelous depth on his infamous 2014 interview. Punk walked out on WWE after getting concussed in the 2014 Royal Rumble, no showing the following night's episode of Raw. He mostly kept silent on the reasons why until November later that year, where Cabana released a tell-all podcast with his then best friend Punk. A lawsuit over the podcast that Punk alleged WWE was funding would later destroy their relationship, which in turn would become one of the main factors why the elite soured on him in AEW. It's all connected! In the podcast, Punk's reasons for quitting WWE can be grouped together in four main categories. Medical mistreatment, personal vendetta, perceived unfairness, and Ryback. Yeah, the, the hated Ryback, that one's... Well, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Before I get into these, you've got to remember 2014 WWE is a very different place to the Triple H run fed a decade later. Hell, Triple H was a very different person in 2014 to a decade later. Or at least that's what he's convinced us all of. While some of Punk's issues might come across as trivial now, or WWE might have since improved on, most wrestlers backstage at the time told Dave Meltzer they loved what Punk had said. Also, total coincidence here, Luke and I recorded a Patreon exclusive podcast where we delved into Survivor Series 2014 and we covered all of this CM Punk stuff. We recorded that last week before Punk made his WWE return. So if you want to enjoy the dramatic irony of me and Luke speculating about Punk's WWE return while discussing Punk's 2014 shoot podcast, go over to patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk now. In the medical mistreatment section, Punk claimed he was often pressured or even booked to work despite being injured or, at some points, still recovering from injury. Given the example of famed orthopedic surgeon James Andres once clearing Punk's knee injury over the phone, which Punk described as witch doctory bullshit. Overall, Punk said his health was the main factor in him quitting WWE. The most explosive accusation was Punk alleging WWE doctor Chris Amann misdiagnosed and improperly treated his staff infection, which could have killed him. A man would later sue both Punk and Cabana for defamation. Although Punk and Cabana won that case, it caused years of stress and their relationship was irreparably damaged by the strain. PW Insider, however, have reported that a man retired from WWE in September 2020. 22, removing that obstacle from Punk's return. Waiting for people to leave to solve your personnel disputes? How dated! You want to make a whole different show for the people Punk doesn't like? That always works! Punk also had many grievances against WWE for the opportunities they did or did not give him. His complaints weren't just limited to booking, like losing to Brock, Undertaker or Rock, or not getting to main event WrestleMania like he believed he deserved. Perhaps a condition of Punk's return is that Mania main event that eluded him. Punk's issues extended to opportunities outside the ring. 
which coincidentally involved the man who also made his return at Survivor Series 2023, Randy Orton. Punk spoke about being very excited when Triple H offered him the lead in 12 Rounds 2. Not so much because he wanted to star in a crap movie, but because it meant he would get time off to heal from injuries. Punk pointed out though that filming dates would clash with WWE's European tour. Triple H replied, No they won't. Punk said, Yeah, yeah they will. Triple H said, He doesn't know when the European tour dates would be. And Punk said, You do? They're, they're in November like they have been for years. Triple H said he'd go away and check. And the very next day, without the courtesy of a phone call pattern of behavior there, Punk found out on the internet that the role had in fact gone to Randy Orton. Fittingly from, from out of nowhere. Punk was also angered when he was told he absolutely couldn't have sponsors on his ring gear for Brock Lesnar to turn up with his Jimmy John shorts soon after. WWE was very restrictive in the types of contracts it offered in the early 2010s, but because of those deals with The Rock, Lesnar and others, modern WWE contracts have been significantly more flexible, letting the wrestlers have far more control over when they work and on outside projects, which you'd imagine would inform Punk's new deal himself. A lot of the breakdown in Punk's relationship with WWE WWE felt personified in his relationship with Triple H. In Punk's booking of it, Trips was the ultimate heel back then. There was the weird European tour situation backstage. There was Punk turning down a WrestleMania non-main event against Hunter. And there was the accusation that it was Triple H that fired Punk on his wedding day. Despite leaving WWE in January 2014, Punk revealed he was fired through a Federal Express letter on the 13th of June the day of his wedding to AJ Lee. Punk claimed the company knew about the importance of that date, as he had requested time off for it and the honeymoon, and because AJ Lee was still working for them at the time and had done the same. Punk claimed he had even spoken to Triple H, whose department was in charge of this stuff, just two days beforehand over the phone about the wedding. Because Punk was fired, rather than his contract simply expiring, which would have happened in a matter of weeks anyway, this severely impacted Punk's royalty payments and suddenly meant he had a one-year non-compete clause, meaning he couldn't appear for any other wrestling promotions or the UFC. It's Triple H's fault Punk wasn't an MMA success. Actually, no, maybe that was on Punk. Being suddenly hit with that on the morning of your wedding was probably quite frustrating. And Punk blamed this on trips. But like I said earlier, Triple H has changed a lot from his old evil ways. This was Prius all loving him for NXT. Punk returning to WWE almost a decade later shows that he must believe Triple H is a good person now. That they can talk about their shared love of wrestling and how they can both put on the best product for WWE fans. And also because the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and they both hate AEW. Dave Meltzer has compared CM Punk's WWE return to Cody Rhodes' move in 2022. That's two people I love that told me they'd never leave AEW. Quick, sign Prince Nana to a 20-year contract! Meltzer argues that Cody leaving AEW for WWE was the real start of the wrestling war momentum shifting, the beginning of WWE's business being the hottest it's been in decades. He believes Punk will have a similar effect unless he screws it all up backstage. Punk might have been plotting this even before his return to AEW on the premiere episode of Collision on the 17th of June. Just six weeks before then, while still under contract with AEW, he showed up backstage an episode of Raw in Chicago. He was seen having a one to two minute long conversation with Triple H where they shook hands. Punk also reportedly spoke to The Miz where they cleared the air for Punk once telling Miz to go suck a blood money covered dick in Saudi Arabia, you f***ing dork. This reconciliation with Trips, maybe over a shared hate for AEW, was a shrewd move. As another reason Punk returned was that Vince no longer has creative control. After Punk did his own thing for about five years, writing comics, losing in the UFC, acting in horror B-movies, he suddenly softened his stance on returning to wrestling. In a weird way, Punk kind of already actually returned to WWE four years ago. In 2019, as part of the billion dollar deal that put SmackDown on Fox, the network wanted to launch a new sports show that wasn't afraid to tackle shoot stories behind the scenes. And to prove that, its special host was CM Punk. 
Fox reportedly pressured WWE to take Punk back, and Punk himself teased in a Reddit AMA that all it would take for him to return is a very big bag of money. Principles. But Vince McMahon refused, with Wrestling Observer Radio reporting there's only two guys Vince never wants to do business with again. CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio. Look, I know Punk is controversial, but that is some unfair company. Oh no. Alberto Del Rio to WWE return confirmed? It appears Vince's removal from power meant he could no longer block CM Punk's comeback. Wrestling Observer Radio have reported WWE re-signing Punk did not involve McMahon, who has found himself increasingly powerless in the new TKO corporate structure. It wasn't even led by Triple H. Instead, it was the decision of WWE President Nick Khan, the man responsible for signing WWE's new TV deals. Remember that for later, as that could be the most important reason of all for why Punk has come back. WWE has had a financially booming 2023, mostly thanks to the star power of Roman Reigns rising all boats, but his bloodline story has cooled massively since August SummerSlam, and Reigns himself is increasingly absent from WWE TV, and for the first time in months, that appears to be having a noticeable effect. WrestleNomics has reported WWE live event ticket sales, which are seen as the canary in the coal mine for a promotion's momentum, has seen negative market-to-market -market performance, with November having a significant decrease in attendance. Dave Meltzer has speculated that WWE signing Punk is a way to jumpstart their live events business from its plateau. And, and yeah, that's, that's kind of it. That's all the reasons in my, uh, in my notes there. I've got, a uh, you know, Punk's bonded with Triple H again. That's nice. We've got, uh, Vince, Vince no longer being a factor. They can sell a few more tickets and, and overall it all hurt AEW. That's, um, that's it. That's the end of the video. I su I su wait, no, no, what are you doing? WWE copyright logo. No, no. This is David Zaslow. He's the CEO and president of Warner Bros. Discovery, the company that owns the networks on which AEW airs. He's also, according to CM Punk, CM Punk's biggest fan. On Punk's AEW return promo on that premiere episode of Collision, he took a shot at Matt and Nick Jackson, calling them counterfeit bucks, whereas he, in comparison, is a big money draw, saying, you know what David Zaslov calls me? One. Bill. Phil. The bill was referencing the then reported, but then dismissed, one billion dollar deal AEW was looking for from Zaslov's company, WBD. According to Punk, at least, he's a big deal in getting big deals. And that's exactly what both WWE and AEW are looking for in 2024. And Punk might be the kingmaker. WWE President Nick Khan has already negotiated new, even bigger money deals for SmackDown moving back to the USA Network and NXT going to CW. He only has Raw left to sort out, whose deal with the USA Network expires in September 2024. AEW's deal with Warner Bros. Discovery expires at the end of 2024. Punk's return could signal WWE's intention to knock AEW off its own network, as Brandon Thurston insinuates. For what it's worth, with Monday Night Raw rights still on the market, WWE now has the wrestler who, according to Phil, David Zaslov called One Bill Phil. Nick Khan is in charge of the Raw TV negotiations. He's also the man who led the charge on bringing Punk back. In August, it was reported WBD was interested in making a play for WWE programming. In the UK, WWE already airs on WBD stations. And with Punk's deal, a reported multi-year one, Khan can go into negotiations promising not just a few months of a big star, but the length of a whole TV contract unless Punk gets injured every other month, of course, or has a bust up with someone backstage, or tweets something inappropriate. So expect Punk to be mostly on Raw to drive that show's viewership and star power as Nick Khan negotiates its new TV deal behind the scenes. And one parting doomsday scenario thought. WWE often write into their TV contracts that they are the exclusive wrestling provider for those networks. With SmackDown on USA Network, NXT on CW, and potentially Raw on another different station, potentially WBD, the options for AEW's own new TV deal and their negotiating leverage become severely 
limited. How do you think CM Punk's WWE move will affect the wrestling industry? Let me know in the comments down below. And does AEW actually make money? Watch our deep dive into those financials to find out.